Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day in the Word. And today is Sunday of the 19th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we've seen this gospel Uh, just a few days ago, and uh, we talked a lot about uh, the encounter of of Jesus with his disciples as he walked to them on the water and all of those things. And I thought that today, what I wanted to do is just kind of focus on the early couple of verses that, uh, that preceded the encounter between Jesus and Peter and all that took place on the boat. And, um, it, remember, it, it takes place at the ending of the feeding of the 5,000. He has just fed 5,000 men along with women or children. And as we said the other day, there could have been anywhere from ten to 13,000 uh, people present at the time. And so after this, he makes the disciples get into the boat and then... Uh, precede him to the other side. So he wanted them to go back to Capernaum, and he was going to follow later on. So why is it that he was doing that? Why was he calling them to go ahead and get in the boat and leave? And uh, I think that John's version of the uh, uh, feeding of the 5,000 helps us to see uh, what what's taking place here. And it's found in uh, John chapter 6, verse 15. And um, after they fell, uh, filled the 12 wicker baskets with fragments, fragments from the five barley loaves uh, that had been more than they could eat. And then it says, when the people saw the sign he had done, they said, this is truly a prophet, the one who has come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. So what's going on is there's this great movement of people. They are wanting to focus on Jesus and to uh, make him king. He had just done this marvelous miracle. And uh, they realize that here's the one that could provide food for us. Here's the one that could provide all of our, our earthly needs. And so they were going to carry him off as a king. Well, by putting the disciples in the boat and setting them out, then the people uh, in, in looking at the boat on the, uh, on the water would probably think that Jesus is with his disciples because they always go together. But this way, he was able to do two things. He could disperse the crowd. He would dismiss them by them thinking that he was in a boat. So their initiative to try to carry him off as a king uh, was thwarted. Also, as they were distracted by the boat, 
he would be able to go up on a mountain and do what he desired to do, and that was he wanted to get together in, uh, with his Heavenly Father. He wanted to spend time in prayer. And I think this is, again, one of the things that that is such a great reminder to all of us is even Jesus, the Messiah, God the Son, found prayer to be essential for fulfilling the calling and the destiny that he had under God. That it was in prayer that he and his Heavenly Father were able to spend time in in talking about the things that he was going to accomplish. It was his time of communion with his Heavenly Father that he separated by his earthly body still needed time for the divine Son of God to spend time with the divine Father. And so there they are in prayer on the mountain, away, alone. And again, very important for us to to look at that dynamic, that it's really important for us to always withdraw ourselves into prayer, to spend time with our Heavenly Father. And we can, of course, uh, pray when we're in like a, a restaurant and, you know, there's this hubbub going on and we can pray for our meal and we can pray when we're out with other people and all of that. But it's very important. In fact, Jesus emphasizes on, on a couple of occasions the importance of getting away, going in. At one point, he talks about going into our closet. And it doesn't have to be a literal closet, but a place of separation, a place where we are alone. And being alone is not the same as loneliness. Being alone is uh, focusing on our, the presence of our Heavenly Father with us at that moment. And uh, that's where we can find um, great opportunity to communicate with the Lord and then spend time allowing him to communicate with us just to be quiet before him. How good it is when we can go to our local parish and just <clears throat> pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament or uh, in a chapel someplace. But even in your home, how, how good it is when we can set apart a place whether we can have a little room. Uh, I have a good friend who has set apart a little prayer chapel. Or, or one of the bedrooms in their house became a prayer chapel for the family. For some of us, it's, it just can be a chair in a special room, uh, a place apart from everything else that we do and everything else uh, that we are about. And it's a time for us to withdraw into being with our Lord. Um, I know for me, it's really important that, that prayer takes place apart from sitting at my desk. It's too, um, uh, well, it's just too much of a temptation to open up an email, to look at things going on for the day. I just need to be away and alone with the Lord. And that's true for all of us, that we need to find those places and those times where he can give us of himself, of his love and his grace, and we can offer ourselves to him. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, we will see you tomorrow, the Lord willing, for another installment of Day by Day in the Word. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.